All right, we're going to get uh, the meeting of community infrastructure services started. Um, we have two items on consent items. Do I have someone who wants to move those? Okay, moved by Councillor Fernandez. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Um, we're going to just park the um, yellow birch one for a minute uh, because we have three delegations coming and I only see two people in the audience. Well, there's three now, but um, we'll come back to that one uh, maybe after the next one and see if everyone's here. Um, so we'll move to number four, follow field drive traffic coming review. Councillor Cazola. Number four. Okay, so we're moving item number four. Are there any questions? All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Uh, we can probably move on to item number five, uh, the Parkvale Drive traffic calming review. Someone want to move that? Moved by Councilor Fernandez. Is there any questions? All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Uh, we might as well continue on traffic calming while we're at it. Uh, Sims Estates Drive traffic calming review. Moved by Councillor Schneider. Absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank staff for some uh, excellent public information centers. Uh, there was just great engagement with uh, the residents on that street and uh, they're quite happy with uh, having their voices heard and what the final result turned out to be. So just wanted to thank staff for excellent work. Okay. Having said that, all in favor? Opposed? That's carried. All right. We are going to come back to Yellow Birch Drive. Um, we are going to hear from the delegations. If they're not all here, we can come back to them. Uh, first up is Mike Flannery. Do you want to make a presentation? If you do, you need to come to the... Okay, if you can just come to the mic, we'll, we'll talk. We'll figure this out. Um, I, in part, I thought this meeting was going, may, may end up being a, a debate between people who favor the parking and people who don't. Um, the turnout doesn't indicate that. We have three people, I, three people that are going to... Sorry? Three people who are registered to speak on this item. So you're one of them. Three people? Mm -hmm. well, I don't know who the third one is. But um, I, I am in favor of the, of the no, uh, no parking on Young Birch Drive. Um, in fact, I kind of initiated it initially because um, of sight lines. Uh, pulling people pulling out of driveways uh, because of the bend on Yellow Birch Drive down by Tressler Road was um, um, it has a kink in the road. So visibility either way pulling out of driveways is is poor. Um, and people pulling out of uh, Fred Allen Crescent um, also have uh, um, difficulty pulling on to Yellow Birch Drive. Um, the only thing I came here today for was uh, two concerns from two different households in regards to this, and one is the uh, the wording on the on the no parking signs that hopefully will be going up. Um, uh, the one person indicated that they would like it to word no stop, no stopping or parking for 20 to 24 hour period. And the other concern was uh, uh, the household on um, uh, facing Yellow Birch Drive on the corner of Yellow Birch and Golden Meadow Drive. Um, because I think what's going to happen is a few cars are going to end up being, uh, end up using Golden Meadow Drive as a substitute for where they are parking now. <clears throat> and um, uh, those people don't want the the cars parked right out to the T intersection. Um, uh, so if, if possibly if a sign could be posted back 
X number of meters, stating that uh, that there is no parking from from here to the corner. And that that's the only feedback that I've gotten from uh, uh, from any of the other residents over this issue. Okay. Uh, questions of the delegation, Councillor Gazzola. Question of the delegation. Yeah, no, I'm not even sure I can ask the question, but I'll try. <laughs> what what number are you at, sir? Can, can, I, I, can, I, I, no, no, I, no, you don't have to answer that. You can't ask what number. You can ask if they're a resident of the street, though. I, I'll answer that. I'm at 211, and I'm forfeiting the parking in front of my home. Is that the only question? I think that's interesting because I, did, I was curious if you were on that side or the other side. Yeah, so no. that's, uh, I think that's good information. It's a shame I can't, yeah. I can't good, ask no, you. Good, good, good question. Okay, that's all the questions we have. Thank you very much. So what's going to happen next the process is we have a couple if, more. If these two concerns are going to slow down, require another vote, or... Um, whatever to the to the process of getting this done um, those two concerns are small okay so with the, just so you know the process is we have a couple more delegations to come forward we'll have a vote today on this item unless it's deferred and then it comes back to council in two weeks time right. Right. Uh, in which case you would have another opportunity to come and present before us okay, okay? very and very quickly I'd like to thank Stephen Ryder very professional okay Thank, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, up next, we have Henry Keyswetter. Okay. And then next, we have Barbara. Do you want to come forward? You have five minutes to make a presentation. I'm Barbara. I'm also uh, in favor of having no parking sign. Okay. And that's it. That's all you have? Okay. Yeah. Is there any questions for Barbara? Nope. Thank you very much for coming in. All right. Uh, we'll come back if the other delegation does arrive because they were told that we were only starting at 3.30. So, um, but we will go to questions of staff at this point. Councillor Ioannidis. <clears throat> yes. Thank you, Chair Galloway Seelock. Um, my question is regarding uh, Mr. Flannery's questions with regards to on Golden Meadow. What what is what is the typical part? What do we usually have uh, in front of stop signs, and how far can cars car park? Mr. Carmichael. Yeah, thank you. Through you, the chair. Uh, pretty standard process we can do with that to keep the parking back from the intersection. Our general provisions of our uniform traffic bylaw allow us to sign 15 meters back from the intersecting roadway, so we can do that at the same time assuming a, a approval of this that we put in the uh, no parking on yellow put those in yep. okay and as far as the the no stopping does that does that make any sense to to, to put that in there or is that just a through the chair uh, typically in residential areas no stopping isn't required uh, no parking typically takes care of the issue by putting no stopping in, it would restrict the local residents from any uh, potential short-term drop-offs they may do. There might be a challenge with that. Um, what I would recommend from a staff perspective is that we proceed with the no parking, and, and if uh, drop-offs and challenges become a concern going forward, we can maybe amp up the regulation no stopping. But quite frankly, I would think it's probably a little overkill at this point in time. Okay. Um. I guess when it's appropriate, I'm prepared to move this and with the addition of those signs on uh, Golden Meadow. Okay, Councillor Fernandez. Thanks. Um, so I'm understanding we just received a. Yeah, you can just, just yeah, you can hold on a minute. Councillor Fernandez is going to ask a question. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I understand. That's okay. Um, we received something just a few minutes ago on our desk related to a business that happens to be located on Yellow Birch. Um, I'm wondering if this is the cause for the challenge with the traffic on the road or the parking on the road. 
Um, I mean, I'm not going to ask any personal questions about this, but was do we understand how long this business has been located on this street? Through the chair, I, I can't speak to the duration of the business being in place. Uh, however, uh, based on the input we've received through the, the request received, it sounds like this is the, what has raised the issue with the local residents, yes. Okay. Um, so how, I mean, I know that we allow home businesses, um, and certainly, there, you know, it sounds like that they've fulfilled their requirements for having a home business. Uh, but if it, how do we deal with this generally throughout the city when we've got a home business that increases both parking and volume of traffic? Through the chair, uh, I can't think of specific examples, um, but I would suggest I can't recall an issue where we've uh, gone to the length of putting no stopping on a residential street to address this. Typically. Parking's permitted on one side of the roadway, and these activities usually are happening within that area. Um, yeah, I, I would still recommend it be monitored after the no parking go in, uh, just so we don't put too restrictive a regulation on the local residents. Um, but we'd have to monitor it further. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm wondering if, if the problem is going to be exactly what the delegate um, mentioned, and that's that the spillover will now be on Golden Meadow Drive. Um, I, I'm just wondering what the ward councillor has been, if, if conversations with the ward councillor and the residents, if you have any additional information that would be helpful. No? Okay. Um, okay, thank you. That's all the questions I have. Okay, so I'm just going to check again. Um, Henry is not here. Henry, please. Okay. We're going to continue on. If he does happen to arrive, we'll um, come back to the issue. Um, door keeps opening, so I keep looking. Um, so is there any... Has, did you move this, Councillor Ioannidis? Perfect. Um, any comments? Oh, okay. Go ahead, Councillor Ioannidis. Yeah, I just want to... Thank staff for uh, looking into this. this obviously, it's become an issue in, in the neighborhood and uh, um, dealing with the residents and uh, coming up with a good solution. And I want to thank the residents for coming in on their behalf. All right, with that, all in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Okay, we'll now move on to our last item, which is item number seven. I think we just have to wait for Mr. Hildebrand to arrive. We're moving a little fast today. Um, we could, is anyone going to be, <laughs> I guess I'll just check the drinking water. Okay. Because uh, Angela is here, so we can go to the uh, drinking water quality management. So we need a motion to um, discuss this item. Uh, well, I believe Councillor Fernandez would move it because uh, she would like to speak to it. So, um, so we're moving it out of information and into uh, discussion. Thank you. Sorry, I got distracted there. I couldn't think of the, the word. Um, all in favor? Opposed? That's carried. All right, go ahead. Sure. <laughs> you, you may speak now. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Um, Angela, I, I mean, I don't have any concerns with this. I know that you know we're following all kinds of standards, and 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 certainly, um, you know. I know we're doing our due diligence, but just a quick question around uh, on um, 1F1-5 where we talk about the valves that are proactively uh, being cleaned and reconstruction areas. I, I know that this is part of our, uh, when we did, some of us we were able to go on the tour, the, the discussion about making sure that these valves are turned regularly. Um, are we seeing that going to happen much more on a, on a 
more increased level to make sure that we get the sediment and dirt out of the pipes and the flushing? Pardon me. Go ahead. Yep. Oh, that's okay. There you go. Through the chair. Yes, that's the intent. We were successful with our water main cleaning area last year, and we've got another area scheduled for this year. And as part of that, we'll do the valve operating checks as well. Okay, so this is really, so what we're doing then is we're just focusing on a specific area, and then from once that is done, then we move to the next area and to the next. Is that correct? It's not that we sort of randomly go through the city. Through the chair, yes, that's the intent. Um, where we have road reconstructions, we concentrate on there as well, but the intent is to have a nice focused area and do the valves and do the cleaning all at once. Okay, the map that showed the um, discolored area on page 25, can you, unfortunately it's not very clear, <laughs> um, so the, the, you have a whole series of dots within that circle, um, was some of that discoloration related to construction? Through the chair, yes it was, some of it is related to construction, um, a lot of them are around Victoria Street and we had a water main out of service there for the bridge work. Um, and others are related to just our normal normal issues. So that's sort of the area we're targeting to try to try to move that water through. Okay. Um, okay. That's all the questions I have. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. With that, we're going to take a five-minute recess, and we'll come back when uh, staff are ready for item number seven. All right, if we can get ready to reconvene. Mm -hmm. We were on such a good, focused path. Barian, Ken, you're probably good. I don't. Are you sticking around in case that other delegation comes, or is there? Okay. Well, then you're probably good. We're just dealing with number seven, or is there something else I'm not seeing? Did we? They're all done. <laughs> Sorry. We did them. We did them before we even did follow to uh, Yellow Birch. Yeah, I jumped all over the place. We're just gonna start at number seven. So if you want to get grab stuff. you did, but that's okay. Councilor, Councilor Marsh is gonna chair this uh, item. Okay. 
Okay, so we have no presentation. Uh, if there are any questions of staff on number seven. Okay, so first up is Councillor Etherington. Through you, Madam Chair, I just wanted to find out, uh, Mark, you could maybe help with this one, but the this seems to be, uh, would be a $3 million cost, almost $3 million. It's not in the budget. When this goes, when it is budgeted, would it bounce other community centers coming up on stream? Can you tell me that? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um. Through the chair, um, right now we haven't looked at uh, funding options to, at this point. Uh, what we wanted to do is just uh, report back our findings to Council for consideration and discussion regarding the possible partnership with the school board and then get direction first before looking into funding options. Um, also, we need to understand if the proposed tartan site where the um, school board is planning to build can support uh, a school, child care centre and community centre. Um, so, uh, as outlined in the report, if indeed everything can fit on site, we'll be bringing back uh, another report to Council for consideration, including funding options. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to satisfy some of the things that trouble me with this. Uh, can you explain why the sudden urgency with this? I think I understand it, but could you explain why the rush? Sure. Through you, Chair. Um, to give context, staff was asked to investigate the possible partnership with the school board back in uh, 2016 in the business plan, um, understanding the development that was occurring in the South End, and uh, that included the development of new schools. Um, and also, although not part of the last iteration of the Leisure Facilities Master Plan, the Rosenberg uh, Secondary Plan indicated that uh, a community center suggests that a community center will be needed somewhere in this uh, area eventually. Um, the school board only only uh, received uh, approval for funding in January. So, with the school board, once they get funding approval, it's it's uh, ready, set, go, and uh, and they go quite quickly. So, they're interested in moving quite quickly on this, um, understanding the need in the area. Uh, after discussing a bit with the school board um, the possible benefits to the city of doing a co cooperative build. Um, that's why we're bringing this forward now and, and we're, we're unfortunately at the, uh, at the disposal or, or at the mercy of their timeline. So that's why it was brought forward so quickly. Okay. And one last question. Again, it sort of piggybacks on my first question. In my ward, the, obviously, there's the future of the Rockway Center and the expansion of Mill Cotland. And I'm just trying to pin down, and I realize that's difficult to say yes or no, trying to pin down whether that will have any delayed impact on either of those projects, depending what happens on Rockway. On, excuse me, Rockway or? Rockway. The Rockway Center, the future of Rockway Center. So, can you repeat the question, please? I'm asking you whether the if we go ahead with this particular project, is it going to have any impact on the expansion of Mill Cortland Center or the future of the Rockway Center? If we get someone to show some interest in that. Through the chair, that's difficult to answer. What I what I can say is that staff are prepared to, uh, are preparing to begin a business case for the uh, for the Mill Cortland Community Center uh, expansion. So that is on the books this year for in the last uh, the last quarter of this this year to start that business plan and start the process on that expansion. As it pertains to Rockway, that's out a little bit. Um, uh, so. It's really difficult not understanding um, uh, Council's 
a discussion on budget budget and budget implications if we are to move forward on this it's hard to answer that uh, about Rockway fair enough thank you very much okay next is Councillor Fernandez thank you uh, <clears throat> so in the report it talks about a 30 percent contingency um, and based on the um, $2.9 million requirement, We're, that, would, that would be a million dollars additional contingency? Through the chair, uh, the $2.9 million recognizes a 20% contingency. A 30% contingency would probably bring the cost up to about $3.1 million. Um, as outlined in the report, staff have already started uh, development of some other line items on the construction budget, including the consultant fees, furniture, furniture and equipment. So we thought that 20% uh, uh, seemed appropriate. Uh, if, if we move forward with this, uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll continue to work on details of the budget. And if there's any changes, we would bring that back for Council's consideration on, in, in April. Would there be any other um, facilities planned for this community centre? So I'm thinking about, uh, like, Centreville Chicopee has a, a, a splash pad. Um, off the top of my head, um, I think Bridgeport also has some additional amenities. Would that be something that would be put into this um, community centre, or would that be something that would be looked at for the Williamsburg Community Centre? Through the chair, at this point in time, um, the budget that was provided uh, did not consider anything like a, a splash pad. I believe, um, I believe right now there is a bit of concern about um, everything that can fit on the site. That's why we're doing a site fit analysis. Um, so, if any any um, splash pad was considered, uh, it wouldn't be on this site. I don't believe. So in our capital forecast, um, the South End Community Centre was, uh, I'm, I'm looking at roughly about $5 million for, for the stand, for that. As I'm just looking at the total. So the capital out of current was $1 million, the DC was 2.5, and the um, reserve for federal gas was 1.5. So um, if, if my addition is correctly, that's about $5 million. And that is, that is planned for shovels in the ground roughly around 2020? Through the chair, that's correct. We would, uh, we would be finishing the project off uh, probably the end of 2020, beginning of 2021, based on this funding. For, for the Williamsburg one? That would be for the Southwest End, yes. Okay. And we're talking about doing this one around the same timeline? Through... Chair, if, if we could get everything through, um, if we could move everything forward, yes, it would be a, approximately the same timing. Can you give me a rough idea? I mean, based on the circles that you've given us on this map, the distance between the June Pioneer Park Community Centre and the Centreville Chicopee Community Centre. I mean, you can go as the crow flies, but it's probably a good 20-minute drive. Through the chair, it looks based these these uh, these circumferences of these uh, of, of these circles cover 2.5 kilometers. So my my guess would be be about three about four kilometers away. But it's not just the, the distance, right? It's the time to travel as well. So what would the the time to travel from the Dune Pioneer Park Community Center to the, the Blue Star on our community center map that you sent us? would be significantly, it it's, would be a straight shot down Huron Road and then into uh, like Homer Watson Huron Road. I'm just, I'm trying to get, understand the, the distance between the two of those as opposed to the two, uh, Williamsburg and the, the one that you're talking about as a, an option to discuss with the board, school board. Through the chair, I think I understand your question. I, I believe it. There is a more direct route from uh, from Dune Pioneer Park to the Blue the Blue Star than there would be to um, to Centerville Chicopee, for instance. To to get to Centerville Chicopee, you would have to get um, onto Fairway Road, which is a busy a busy road, and get over to um, uh, over to Centerville Chicopee on Morgan. Okay. 
Okay. Um, what's the projected population for the, the Tartan Avenue proposed site? I believe that's outlined in the report, and I'm just going to give you the, the number I have. I don't think I saw the. It, it, in, uh, it's a, it's approximate for in the next ten years, it'll grow to approximately twelve thousand three hundred people, and then full build out would be approximately thirty seven thousand uh, three hundred or four hundred people. And the Williamsburg Community Center is supposed to serve how many people? Roughly as much or less? Oh, it's pretty intense. Pretty intensive development. I don't have those numbers at my disposal. I can certainly get them for council if okay. you'd wish. Okay. I, I bet the ward councillor does, but I'll, I'll uh, keep back in for some other questions. Okay, thank you. Councillor Gazzola. Can you uh, remind me just uh, in our process when the next leisure facilities master plan, what's involved with it and when would it be done when would it come to council for approval? There's reference to it, but I just wonder if you could be. And, and in line with that, also I'm going to ask about the uh, the uh, development charges uh, renewal. When when is that? Sorry. Sorry, uh, Mr. May. Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, the Leisure Facilities Master Plan should be before Council in the first quarter to the first half of next year. And the, uh, the update to the DC bylaw would follow that, but it would be done in the first half of next year. It'll be approved by the first half of next year with a, with a brand new Council, both of these. Uh, under the existing uh, Leisure facility master plan. Where is the next uh, community center slated for? Through the chair. Um, the next uh, facility slated is the, um, uh, is the expansion to uh, Mill Cortland Community Center. The next actual community center is uh, uh, the southwest end, uh, so the Rosen, Rosenberg or Williamsburg area. Um, the funding is for the community center in the southwest end. It comes from 2018 to 2021. And for the Mill Cortland Community Center addition, the funding is for 2019 to 2022. Yeah, the, the Williamsburg one, is that intended to be the next location? Like there is already uh, portable or rentable units there. Is that, so is it our... Would it be our intent that, that it would become a fixture? Through the chair, the actual location has not been determined as of yet, but it would be um, somewhere in the southwest end. That's pretty broad, southwest. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, is, there, what, is there a compelling reason to go ahead with something like this before we have done all our homework. Is there a compelling reason? I, I don't see, it's pretty hard to tell with, a, with the financing, but. <clears throat> Through the chair. Um, uh, uh, sorry, um, Mr. Hildebrand, we also have another staff person, Mr. May, to, okay. who wants to no. weigh in on that. Sorry. Sorry, Madam Chair, there's two compelling issues here. The one being, if we can build it in partnership with the school board, it'll be a lot cheaper than if we have to build it on our own. Uh, and so that is, to me, one of the most compelling reasons. The other one is timing. Again, if we build it in partnership, this could potentially open by 2020. If it was left on our own, it would be many years beyond that before we would build it. When is it planned? Uh, so right now, it is not in the 10-year capital forecast. So that's not a compelling reason to have something come sooner. I think that saving, I forget the figure, but it's in the millions of dollars is a compelling reason uh, to look at this partnership further. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Singh. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. So, um, 
And again, Councilor Gazzola raises uh, the point of it, it is outside the, uh, the capital forecast, but so where I'm focusing on reading the report is the savings that's uh, built in as, as a partnership. Um, now, is it as easy as finding another partnership if we were to forego this opportunity and there's another planned school, be it with a public or, or Catholic board? Would it be just as easy as saying, yes, we want to partner with you and they'll automatically say yes? Or is this a unique opportunity? Through the chair, um, initially the, the discussions were with the Catholic School Board. Um, they've already begun their pro process, so building in that area, the, the Catholic School Board has started with their school. Um, uh, this, the Public School Board, it, as I indicated in the report, is, is hoping to begin uh, in April, so um, I'm not aware of any other schools in that in that area that are um, going to be built uh, in the future. So we we do have limited opportunity if we were to consider a partnership with the school board, either of the school boards. Okay, so that's the important point that we do have a limited opportunity. So this is for at least now. It's, this seems to be this is it, um, and as. Ultimately, what's being planned, um, uh, it's dedicated one gymnasium, uh, but with a partnership, uh, the community center after hours would be able to utilize, so for more programming, uh, three gymnasiums. Is that correct? Through the chair, that's, that is correct. We would have to um, uh, work with the school board and the early on center uh, for access to that space, but yes, in an in essence, it's my understanding that the school board, in addition to the, the proposed uh, program space that the city is proposing, um, they are also uh, including a double gymnasium. So that would be three, three gymnasiums. Would it be fair to say in any, gym, uh, any community center, if you were to break it down with all the, uh, uh, the assets that are available in the community center, the gymnasium is probably the largest cost of build uh, for a community center? Would that be correct? The cost of building a gymnasium compared to rooms that are for programming. Sure. Um, through the chair, there's, there's, uh, it's a substantial cost only because of the size, yes. From, this, from square footage point of view, yes, it is the biggest space in the, in the community. Center. That's what I expect. It's biggest space yeah. as well. It has additional uh, complexities because of the size yep. in the height. Uh, of it as well mm -hmm. for the uh, inside. Mm -hmm. um, and the report, do we estimate what that, outside of the savings, you know, it, uh, as staff have outlined in the report, it's 2.9 would be potential cost uh, with contingencies built in. And if you were to do a standalone, it's some 4.1. That's almost a $1.2 million savings. But if we had to build something that was equivalent, say three gymnasiums, what would that cost be then? The, the estimated additional space would be about uh, 5,200 square feet uh, at about $200, $269 per square foot, and then you add the contingencies and, and uh, the contingencies as well as uh, the architectural fee uh, on top of that. So it'd be an additional about 1.5. 35% or something like that. Yeah, it'll get an additional 1.5. Yeah. So if you look at the 1.5 and the 1.2, we're almost saving close to $3 million in, in, in trying to look at this as a partnership. Um, what I was surprised to see was we're not looking at a massive facility here. It's unique that it's going to have uh, additional gymnasiums with the partnership with the school board, but we're not looking at a massive, massive uh, footprint. It just has some programming and office space. That's about it, right? Correct. In addition to the school space, we're, we're just uh, looking at an, an initial gym, uh, large multi-purpose room, and then office spaces and, and storage space and a smaller programming room. Okay. All right. Um, outside uh, utilization of the space that's there, are we going to be building um, a playground as well by the community center or because there's a playground that maybe they are already that would not be necessary or what's that consideration? I know the answer has been already, already asked and answered for, um, you know, potential uh, splash pad, and that's not feasible. But how about a playground? 
through the chair I'm not we, we haven't gotten into detailed discussions about what the other amenities would be uh, I believe that schools uh, especially junior kindergarten to six or five do have a playground uh, so those I'm assuming that those would be part of the the build as well we've partnered else, uh, other places with the school board correct, uh, for community center through the chair we have uh, a number of different types of partnerships for instance Cameron Heights and Forest Heights um, I'm not aware of any any um, any co cooperative build that we've done with the school board in the past uh, I, I doubt that we've quantified it but I'm so sure it's easily observable and and staff have recognized this too I'm sure uh, when we have that type of partnership and there's other additional facilities that the school board have that's after hours outside the gymnasium like a playground maybe you know a basketball court mm -hmm. that gets far more utilized after hours because because of proximity to the school as well correct through the chair I believe so okay all right that's so um, I'll have some comments afterwards I'm sure okay thank you uh, next we have Councillor Galloway Sealock yeah I just have uh, a couple questions um, if I note correctly, the savings um, would be 1.25 million. Is that approximately right? Through the chair, that's correct. And so that that just brings us um, to a. But if we were building on our own, um, like Williamsburg, which has got between five million and six million dollars in the budget. Um, it would actually be a savings of closer to two and a half million dollars if we did our own standalone building down the road. If you, I, through the chair, I believe I understand your question as if we were to build a standalone facility at approximately 16,000 square feet, yes, it would cost approximately four, we would budget approximately five million dollars for that. Okay, so th so basically, the savings is between 1.2 million uh, and two million dollars, roughly. Correct. Okay. Um, I had one other question. Oh, that's more of a point. Um, that's all my questions, but I'm uh, very happy to move the recommendation at the appropriate time, and I have um, some comments to make. Okay, thank grumble, you. Grumble, grumble. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor, or sorry, Mayor, v Mayor Verbanovic. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Marsh. A um, number of my questions have been uh, answered already, but just in looking at this, um, this map, um, Mr. Hildebrand, you said that these circles are two and, two and a half kilometers in circumference? Through the chair, that's correct. Okay. Um, and if I'm looking at them correctly, other than a um, little bit of uh, some, a corner sort of in the sort of from Iron Needles to Trustor Road on the west side and, and a little bit in Grand River north and south that's sort of on the fringes and the, the, the sports world area neighborhood. Um, this whole southwest side of the city, if I'm reading it at uh, these circles correctly, uh, is a huge developed area with absolutely no community centers right now. Is, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, do you know, and, and I know there was a population number asked already, but if we sort of look at the uh, the areas around the Williamsburg and C community center and the, um, the the one that we're potentially talking about do we know what the population is there already and sort of what we're expecting in the next five years through the chair for clarification you're asking about the Williamsburg community center area and the blue and what's covered by the blue circumference so, so yes, yeah, so if I look at the Williamsburg C Community Center and, and this one, um, the, the area that's outside of any other circles, in my mind, already has thousands of people living there. Um, do we know what that thousands of people is quantified as currently and what sort of the, the planned growth rate over the next five years? I mean, anecdotally, I. I know it's thousands and I know there's a lot more coming, 
but I'm, I'm just sort of trying to get a sense of what portion of our community's population is is totally unserviced right now in comparison to m m virtually any other part of the city. Through the chair, I can get specific numbers for council if you if you wish. Um, if I was to hazard a guess, um, Williamsburg Community Center currently um, is serving around 35,000 people, but I have to confirm that. Um, okay. I wonder if, uh, should we have Councillor Galloway C. Lux uh, jump in? Sure. Sorry, I, I know that the population within Ward 5 specifically is over 20,000 people. Um, but Williamsburg, um, when we initially started, which we've grown since then, the households within their boundary was 4,500. Okay. So you, you do that multiplication, but that was... Um, that has been there for, that was 10 years ago. Uh, and so we know that there's been growth since then. With many more slated to come on stream? Right, to, with all of Rosenberg to come on stream, with all of Becker Estates to come on stream, with all of Madame to come on stream, yeah. And then do you have a sense, um, e either of you, in terms of the population that sort of has no service right now, um, sort of within that two and a half kilometer area in the uh, in the one that in the Tartan Avenue proposal and what's the slated growth there through the chair right now it's uh, 10,000 uh, 10,900 people that's going forward you mean uh, that's currently right now at, in that area in that area, it would service the, the Tartan, Avenue site, Tartan Avenue site would service now approximately 10,900 people. Well, yeah, and okay. That, I mean, the, I think both of those are important pieces of information because it it does speak to um, the importance of, of servicing a large underserviced uh, area in, uh, in in the community. Um, okay, those are all the questions I have right now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilor Yanetsky. Just to get a clarification on s some of the questions that may have been asked, but just to expand on the answer. Um, in terms of the future expansion that has already been considered by staff, you talked about the Mill Cortland potential expansion, community center. Rockway Center was still up in the air in terms of a potential expansion. And for brand new community centers, Williamsburg was supposedly the next one on the list. Is that correct? Through the chair, that's correct. I'm sorry? That is correct. Okay. And what time frame was that anticipated in ballparking it roughly? Through the chair, the, the, south end, the Southwest End Community Center, the business plan will be starting this year, so the, the end of this year. Um, uh, and Mill Cortland, the business case is starting at the end of this year. So um, the funding uh, for the South Southwest End Community Center is uh, pr provided in the budget from 2018 to 2021. So likely 2020, 2021 is when it's anticipated to be uh, constructed. That's the Williamsburg one, right? That's correct. And what about the Mill Cortland? The well, Cortland expansion is, uh, has funding um, from 2019 to 2021. Um, majority of the funding is in place by 2021, um, and so anticipated that that would be complete around 2021, 2022. Okay. And then the other one was the Rockway Center, and that's even further off, roughly? Through the chair, that's correct. Uh, funding is in the budget for 2023, so that... Uh, that's out uh, a little bit more. Okay. So in the southwest corner of where Williamsburg is intending to have a future community center, of which you said no site has been determined yet, more or less, so it would be somewhere in that area. And then you've got this proposed one on Tartan as well. Of the two, of the Williamsburg and the Tartan, which is the one that's more preferred? <laughs> Through the chair. <laughs> I suppose it depends on which community you're talking with. Um, um, I think that uh, they both have benefits. The, the one in the southwest end has already been on, on, um, 
on the books. However, the, the one in the south end, there is an opportunity for, uh, for some savings if we work in partnership with the school board, if in, in fact um, all the amenities proposed for the tartan site can fit on the site. Okay, I see that where the Williamsburg is showing on the, the, the dot, that's where the existing temporary facility is right now, out of, the, uh, out of the, that complex there, right? Through the chair, that's correct. Yeah. So that site that you're talking about could potentially come further south, potentially. Through the chair, uh, that is correct. Okay. So the population of the Williamsburg that it would encompass versus the one from Tartan could overlap considerably more and be serving the same population. It won't be perfect, but it would be considerably more. Through the chair, if, uh, if it moved south down fisher Holman, that is correct. Okay. And if you go with uh, both of these, does that bump back the Mill, Cortland, and the Rockway? Uh, through the chair, as a, um, indicated earlier, uh, it's hard to answer that question, not understanding how we would fund it if we were to move forward, so we would have to determine um, uh, what the funding sources would be. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Councillor Davey. Thank you. Uh, I stepped out for a second, so apologies if this was asked, but the first question is, in terms of the commitment today, it's just really just to do the study. We will still have full discretion when, if this, come, when this comes back in April to look at the funding sources and what the impacts might be, correct? Through the chair, that's correct. Okay. Um, who owns the land now? Does the school board own the entirety of the land? Through the chair, the school board, the proposed site, as I understand it, the, uh, where the school is going to be on, the school board does own that land. However, the, the, the city of Kitchener does own adjacent land as well. Okay. To, to so, the, it, so you don't anticipate any, any property swaps as part of this at this point? I, I can't answer that at this point. I haven't got into those details. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. All right. Uh, Councillors. Well, Councillor Singh has stepped out. Uh, so uh, it doesn't appear to, uh, we don't, I don't see any additional questions. So uh, next we have, oh, sorry, one more question, and then we'll be queuing in for comments. So given the proximity of the two, the Williamsburg and the possible Tartan Avenue, Tartan Street, whatever. Um, if we were looking for funding and one was preferred in terms of the money that we would have available to us, would there be a, a suggestion to bump one out? I, I mean, I would hate to see the other two centers, especially Mill Cortland, which has been waiting a long time to be expanded. Would there be a thought to delaying the Williamsburg in if we were able to build the Tartan one with the partnership with the, with the, um, the school board? Through the chair, again, that's a difficult question to ask, answer because I would have to be working with finance and I'm not sure what all the options are. So it's really difficult for me to zero in on one option over another, um, which is bumping uh, other facilities. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I certainly understand the need and, and the opportunity um, is, mm -hmm. is really good. I just, I'm just wondering about the number of projects happening all at the same time mm -hmm. and, and, and some of that jockeying for position that might happen. Mm -hmm. um, so I just thought I would just pose that, that question. And we have funding in the capital forecast, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. that could be, we've done that before. We've shifted funding before for other, other projects. Okay, thanks. Thank you for letting me have that question. Sure. Uh, Councillor Singh, additional questions or comment? Um, I had a question about the funding amounts. Oh, uh, okay, well, um, so first I'm going to go to Councillor Gallery Seelock for comment, and then you can go ahead. I want to be clear that this one cannot be at the expense of the Williamsburg Community Centre. They've waited 10 years for a centre, and so it will not be at the expense, in my opinion, of Williamsburg. Um, but what I've also done, and as I sat around this horseshoe for 12 years, I have never 
take in one facility's funding and put it to funding in the ward I represent. And I am committed to that again. So I will sit here before you now and I will sit before you in April and say I will not fund this project with funding to put back the timing of Mill Cortland or Rockway. I will move forward with options with staff and work with staff to fund this by other means and not taking it from those community centers. I've done that before and I'll do it again. I've I committed to the Dune Pioneer Park knowing that they needed their expansion and never once went after or touched their funding in order to fund something in Ward 5. So I am committed to that and I, I, I stand here before you today using my word and saying that I will not put this project forward if it's at the expense of another community amenity not in the word I represent. I want to be clear that there is a splash pad already going at the, the South District Park, and so I'm not sure there would be another need for one of those um, uh, right at the community center. And I think it's important to note that one in five kids come from Ward 5. 20% of the children in this community come from Ward 5. That shows a huge demand and huge need. There are currently four schools, four public schools, and one Catholic school. We have a new school opening next year. We have a new school opening in 2020. We have another Catholic school that's going to probably open in 2019. So we have three schools opening in the next three years. All those schools started with K to six, or started as K to eight, and were planned to stay K to eight, and they've all had to go to K to six because they can't accommodate all the students. And there's been expansions on all of those schools, and none of them are more than 15 years old. So there's a huge young population, young demographic in Ward 5 that we need to serve. We are the only ward in Ward 5 that does not have a permanent community centre. So I understand the concern when maybe two are going along the same timeline, but we don't have one. We have a space that we're currently leasing, and we're going to be the, the ward boundary review that we did, I think it was about eight years ago, projected that Ward 5 will be the highest populated area. And we have an opportunity right now to save money by building this community amenity sooner. And I think it's something that's really important. The potential savings of $1.25 million to $2 million is huge. And those are in today's numbers. Those aren't in numbers 10 years down the road because we all know that that $5 million would be inflated at that point in time. One of the things that concerns me is that the sites are getting smaller and smaller for schools. So these partnership opportunities aren't always going to be there. We learned this with regards to the Catholic school site. We can't partner with them because the site's not big enough. And so the, the, the more that we grow and the denser our communities become, the school sites become smaller and smaller. And we're not going to be able to partner. We are lucky in this case that our, our pub park land is actually adjacent to uh, which would probably feed the need for any play equipment that uh, would need to be for the school as well. And so we're lucky in that case that these are adjoining properties. This isn't coming out of nowhere. It's been on the business plan. Staff have brought it back. It was to look with both school boards and continue to move forward. We have an opportunity now to save a lot of money, and I think it's something that we need to continue to at least pursue and work towards finding funding solutions. We've, over the years, found funding solutions for many different projects that made sense or that we had to do. And so I'm committed over the next month to two months when we bring the report back to work with staff to find funding options. And I, again, say not at the expense of other community centers. So I would appreciate everyone's support in uh, moving this forward. Thank you. So sorry, one more time. Do you have an, a question and a comment? OK. OK, then we'll go to. Uh, so, so what I'd like to do is go to Councillor Singh first, and and then uh, and then I'll prioritize councillors who haven't spoken. Yeah, just very quickly for part of my question, uh, Madam Chair, uh, was right now it, the decision that we're making is to continue pursuing this opportunity at a cost of ten thousand dollars. Ultimately, this will have to come back um, as to how the funding uh, is um, is going to be proposed. So we're not deciding, yes, go ahead and build this. It's ultimately just go continue carrying that conversation that's already been happening since 2016, but at a slight cost of $10,000 for us now, and then bring back a more detailed report on what that impact, impact is going to be in a funding source-wise down the road, correct? Through the chair, that's correct. 
Excellent. Um, can I make my comment as well? Please. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think uh, the Ward Councilor has uh, are very, you know, clearly articulated the overall benefits of pursuing this. My entire time on Council, and I've heard others as well, have strongly supported and, in fact, even demanded our staff in saying look for opportunities out there that will ultimately reduce the cost to our taxpayer. I realize this, is not, this, this was not necessarily in the capital forecast, but the savings that we're looking at are substantial. And the question isn't, you know, we're accelerating something or, you know, this is something maybe wasn't necessary to build. No, this is absolutely going to be necessary uh, for this community to service this community as, as rapidly as it's growing. But down the road, if you don't take advantage of what's before us, it's going to come at a significant cost to our taxpayers. And, and, and we've all, I think, have made a commitment to our taxpayers to take every opportunity possible to reduce that burden upon them. So it's something that we're going to have to build no matter what, but we're going to be able to build it at a, from 1.2 to $2 million less. And on top of it, I ask questions of staff, having additional facilities that's going to better serve the community. And too far too often we see, um, you know, um, our schools throughout the community and they have gymnasiums and we wonder, you know, why, why doesn't the community have benefit of that as well? Well, this is an opportunity and that's going to allow us to continue on hopefully of encouraging this type of partnerships and other opportunities as well. So at this point when seeing it's a $10,000 to explore some potential $2 million and perhaps more of a saving, I say absolutely yes. Thank you. Councillor Davey. Thank you. Much of what I was, what I would have said has already been said. I think um, although we are just approving the, the study at this point, I think what staff needs to know is the intention. Um, if everything lines up, if we're going to go through with this, and I would say that yes. Um, not only because uh, I'll become the first person to say that um, costs that uh, we weren't totally aware of earlier on, I know it didn't come out of the blue as uh, Councillor Galloway Seelock said, but costs that come up sort of unexpected. I'm the first person to sort of complain about it, but uh, as Councillor Singh mentioned, this you also have to bring opportunities to us when they come up, and this is a good opportunity for us to explore this, and I think that the, the problems that we face um, in terms of the funding are solvable, so I look forward to the report in April. Uh, I just wanted to add as well, uh, share a, um, a community center with uh, Councillor Schneider that is part of uh, the St. Daniel's uh, School. And uh, my experience on council and with that community center is it's worked very, very well. It's very efficient in terms of the use of the gymnasium. And there's always going to be challenges working back and forth with, uh, with another entity. But uh, it really does show that we're, you know, there's that whole spirit of efficiency in working together. So hopefully this works out. And I think it's, uh, it's a good thing to come forward. Thank you. Councillor Schneider. Thank you, Chair Marsh. Um, I remember when we were doing, uh, the clerks presented the uh, ward boundary review, and Councillor Galloway Sealock's ward is, is one that is set for some explosive growth, and uh, I, I think it's really important that we keep up with our community centers, especially uh, serving areas that are, are growing like this. Uh, I'm really excited and, and happy to see the pursuit of partnerships because um, they're going to save both the school board and the city money and be great uh, for savings for both. So it, it's very responsibly, responsible fiscally for our uh, citizens and for us as a city. Uh, we'll get a, a greater facility combined at, at a lower price. And as Councillor Davies said, it's working very well at the uh, Stanley Park Community Center. So. I'm uh, very encouraged by, uh, by this. And again, we're just pursuing, we're just looking into things. Nothing is finalized, so fully support this. Thank you. Councillor Etherington. Again, through you, Madam Chair, this is uh, it's a difficult one for me to decide. I plan to oppose this recommendation, but there's a chance I might change my mind when I get more information, information I want to know about Mill Cortland and Rockway. I want to be absolutely certain that those two do not get the short end of the stick and get delayed or bounced by this proposal. Mill Cortland is a very busy community center serving at least four or five 
neighborhoods. It's some of those are uh, lower income neighborhoods. They've waited for years for this expansion. They badly need it. And I don't want to see them bounced aside again. They've been bounced a few times. Um, we're getting renewed questions about Rockway that have been quiet for a while. And all of us remember what happened at Rockway and what we faced when when there were delays there. We've made promises and pledges about the future of that center. And I don't want to see that promise uh, broken. And I'd also point out to the ward councillor, I appreciate the position she's in and the position councillor is in, but I don't think she would have any control if Mill Court and Rockway were delayed. So it's fine to promise that, uh, you know, those delays wouldn't happen. But it's the entire council that would control that decision, not the council. And I can't see that council voting against the proposal if it meant delaying other projects. Okay, so Councillor Etherington, are you asking that we direct staff to come back with this report, uh, uh, um, an exact timeline of the uh, capital forecast for other centres as well, incorporating this new project? I think, Madam Chair, those questions and information about those questions that have been brought up in El Colton and Rockway we definitely need some firm, reliable information, at least we do for my sake, for me to vote in favor of this or to change my vote on it. So yeah, I would recommend that. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, next we have Councillor Ioannidis. Thank you, Chair Marsh. Um, yeah, I, I think this is, this is really a, a really pleasant surprise to see here and uh, you know, it's without question, Ward 5 is underserviced with regards to city services. So I'm more than, more than happy to support this. I know it may relieve some tension in other centers as well. Um, and great work to, by the staff and, and, and the ward councillor. And I hope in the next couple of months I'm going to hear a similar proposal for Forest Heights uh, Community Centre with, with regards to a public par private partnership but uh, with all that I'll, I'll be happy to support this. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mayor Verbenovic. Well thank you very much uh, Chair Marsh. Um, certainly uh, very pleased to see this before us and, and I want to thank staff in particular for including this map because um, you know, we've all heard the uh, the saying, a picture speaks a thousand words, and uh, in this case, uh, a picture speaks for thousands of, of thousands of residents. Um, and while we all, I think, notionally knew the Southwest was uh, underserviced, I think this makes it very clear to all of us in our collective responsibility as council uh, f with responsibility for the whole city, not just our individual wards, but we're, we sit around this council chamber making decisions on behalf of the entire city, um, it's clear that uh, we need to take steps to, um, to further serve the needs of uh, that part of the city, which is rapidly growing. So this, this visual, I think, has, has helped us. Secondly, in supporting this, I look at it in the context that Councillor Davy has talked about, and that's our, our track record with, uh, with partnerships. And we've had a number of very positive partnerships. I think of the library at Grand River Collegiate. I think of the, the library at St. Mary's uh, High School. And I think of the community center um, at, uh, at St. Daniel's. And as well as our, our downtown community center. And all of them have been... Uh, very positive indications of, of partnerships, um, you know, in the community with our respective boards, 
and, um, and important partnerships that I think we need to, to build on, particularly when they, they do, which is the third point, save the kinds of dollars that uh, are being talked about in, in, in this report. And um, I think it would be um, imprudent of us to not at least take the next step and, and do the work that's necessary to look to see can the site accommodate it, um, what would it look like from a space perspective, and, and how would we handle it from a, a, a funding uh, perspective going forward. So uh, I certainly will be supporting this and I'm hopeful that uh, much like all these other circles have been supported over the years in the past, uh, Council can see to supporting this so that uh, we give this area the consideration that it deserves. Thank you. Next we have Councillor Fernandez. Thanks. So I know that um, the Ward 5 is, is, is exploding because I hear about it quite often in, in my area because we're back to back. And certainly the expansion of the Dune Pioneer Park Community Centre is as anticipated by some of the Ward 4 residents as it is by some of the Ward 5 residents. Um, I think there is a, a great benefit to whenever we partner with either a school board or a pool or you know any other group. I think it really helps build relationships and it means that we have uh, more opportunity for our residents to use that space. I think that we, you know, there's over 30,000 residents in, in the Ward 4 because we have to take into consideration all of the students that are there as well. And we've got an expansion finally, it's taken a long time. So I have empathy for the Ward 5 councillor. I just am concerned about two builds of community centres within a year's time. Uh, and I would, I think that the other concern that I have is if it has any impact whatsoever on the Mill Cortland or on the Rockway Centre, I would not be able to support uh, a build on Tartan. Or that I would see the funding for Williamsburg be shared between the Tartan Road development and possibly moving Williamsburg out a few years, not, not as far out as the Tartan would have been if it had been in the capital forecast. But I think that at least there'll be something, a good, solid community center with a school, with lots of area for, for the uh, community to participate in activities and do good proper programming. It's very challenging, I'm sure, for the programming to happen out of the existing space that they have right now, which really is, 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 insig is really insignificant in relation to the population and what the population needs. So um, I'm, I'll support the study um, because I think it's important for a study. I just don't know that I will support um, a fun a funding if it means coming out of anything else. Um, outside of the Williamsburg funds. I think that there's a, a possibility for some shifting and at least that's, that there's some support and a community center for the residents in that, in that growing area before they would have to wait for the Tartan one to come online had it been in the capital forecast at all. Thank you, Councillor Cazola. <coughs> oh, I'm gonna make some positive statements. <clears throat> We've just completed our budget. The budget's not even cold. It's that recently, we and there's no money. There's no funding for these for these projects. <clears throat> so if there's no funding there, the money has to come from somewhere. It has to come from somewhere. It's not there in our budget that we just finished. So I'm really uh, amazed when I hear that Mill Cortland still is, is hanging there and, and Rockway Senior Citizens Center. Those, we've, had, we've had those on the books for so long and we just, they're just staying on the books. We're never doing anything about it. 
The other thing is we do have a process, and it's a good process. We have a, a good uh, leisure facilities master plan. We have excellent uh, procedures in dealing with development charges. And, and all of a sudden, we're jumping out of order. We're throwing everything aside and, 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 and moving ahead. I don't, uh, I can see sometimes you, you have to move away from a process if there's a compelling reason. I don't see compelling reasons here. This savings thing has been thrown out. You know, we have a lot of sales come along in our own lifetime, and we just always can't afford to take, take advantage of all the sales. Sometimes we have to turn down a good sale because we just can't afford it. So I, I don't, uh, there's too much, too much in the air now. Uh, we, we have too many other projects. I won't even support the study because I know once the study starts, that's it. It's game over. So uh, I don't think this is the direction we should be uh, moving in, and uh, therefore I won't, uh, I won't be supporting it. Councillor Yanetsky. I um, listened to all the positions and arguments here on the horseshoe and uh, uh, asked some questions of staff as well. Um, we have a new project thrown in, in front of us here to, to consider, notwithstanding all the other um, community centers that are pending in terms of a brand new one or expansion or redevelopment. And um, I, I I understand where Councillor Etherton is coming from in terms of his concerns for his two uh, community centers there in terms of being uh, stymied to some degree potentially. As a senior, I've, uh, I'm in contact with a lot of senior people around town and they, I keep hearing on a constant basis what's happening with Rockway, when are we moving forward with it, how come there's delays since we've had the last uh, sessions on that back a few years ago. And uh, let's, let, let's push that forward. Let's push that forward. Now, if we're going to take this one here, which just was thrown on our, our plate this, this afternoon, well, I'm going to hear backlash from my colleagues and uh, my senior colleagues uh, about, well, here we go. Rockway's now back on the back burner again. So I, I have reservations and and. and and um, really undesirable intentions of, of, uh, of supporting this, but I, I feel for projects that have been on the books and, uh, and we're not really following a process. I mean, we have a budget that we also follow as well, and, and now we're going to be somehow trying to find money, although the staff will probably do something to, to, to do it, uh, and going forward on this. So, um, I have reservations even doing the study as well because I somehow feel that it will come to a conclusion in a, in a way that may not be acceptable. Okay. Um, Mayor Verbanovic. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I just, uh, I'm not interested in making a second set of comments. I'm, I just want to clarify something because there is some, some misinformation that I think uh, seems to be getting out here. I have not heard a single staff person or a single member of council suggest that either Mill Cortland or Rockway are somehow in jeopardy because of what we're talking about. And I think it's, it, it's really doing healthy debate and injustice if we start throwing these, these uh, hypotheses out there like they're factual when there has been nothing of the like mentioned today. You want to mention that after a report comes in April and it shows that? It's fair game. But to suggest today that that's been suggested, I don't think is, is appropriate. And let's be clear on the Rockway situation. The Rockway situation, we have always said, is, is going to be part of a, a broader look at that site and an intensification of that site with a partner when the opportunity presents itself. And all of council is fully aware of that. Uh, thank you. Uh, Go around the chambers again. No. No one said that. We are not. Uh, uh, what is your point of personal privilege? I, I, why has the mayor had a second opportunity to speak? 
you know what, I granted some leeway because there was a need for clarification. Well, I myself clarification? have not... What clarification? Uh, we can play the tape back at your leisure to see what the clarification was if it's not clear yet. But the clarification is about the fact that we have not been discussing anything about delaying uh, other other uh, community centers and so but it's up we have the right to say as councillors that we're concerned about that okay we have the right to say that everybody and, and uh, nobody's I, I, I denying not only that said right. that i was concerned about all our city projects because mm -hmm. it's not in our budget and so we have the right to say that and thank you thank you councillor gazola you're you're absolutely right everyone has a right to say their comments what I think is important here in, in the realm of a public meeting is that when uh, the tone and the, uh, the messaging is about uh, ass assumptions that are, are not based in truth, that we need to clarify those. Right? Uh, I'm going to go to Councillor Galloway Sealog for a final comment and then we'll go to a vote. I just quickly wanted to say um, part of that, um, one of the reasons why I said in my first comment was I didn't want to impact Mill Cortland or Rockway. I made that commitment to you and yet you still try and diminish my word and that's not okay in my opinion and so I want to say that. Um, I know that specifically I can't direct, but what I uh, committed to doing was working with staff in that April report to come back with funding options that doesn't impact Mill Cortland or Rockway. That I can control. I can't control the vote at the end of the day. Um, and so that is, is one thing. And the other thing is, is there was implications made that it is going to impact Rockway and Mill Cortland. Staff can't sit here today and say, Absolutely not, but there is absolutely zero, sorry, I shouldn't say that. I wouldn't support this if there's going to be impact, okay? And you can laugh at me, or you can agree with me, or you can look at me like I'm crazy. That's up to you. But I sit here before you, and you can play this, this back. You can play this back on, in April and say, look what you said. Well, I will not allow it to impact other centers as I never have. And the implication that this is the seniors are getting um, hit because of this is so completely false and fabricated. Do you really want to put the, the seniors versus the kids? I don't. This, I am committed to the senior center in the way that we have outlined. We're moving forward with an RFP. We are looking for a public private partnership with that. I'm in, I am in. Okay. I am in on Mill Cortland. I am in, and so I just think, let's do this study. Let's see if it makes sense, and let's continue to proceed forward and see what the report brings forward in April. Okay, a uh, recorded vote has been called. Um, Councillor Etherington, you've had a chance to comment. Um, I... Okay, can you please keep it brief? Because we have spent ample time on this. Sure. And I don't think we've spent adequate time on it. All that I'm saying, I'm not saying that Mill Cortland is going to be delayed. I'm not saying that Rockways are going to be thrown out the window. No one has said that. I didn't say that. Councillor Gazzola didn't say that. So the mayor's comments are out of line. As far as Councillor Galloway Sealock is concerned, I'll have to be careful with my words, but I'll wait and see what happens when the report comes back and when there is a vote on this. And at that time, I've been told by staff that there is no way of saying whether those two will be affected. I want to know before I vote whether those two will be affected. Okay. And Mark will give me that information or Mr. May will give me that information. At that time, I'll, I'll determine how I'm going to vote. But I don't like being told that Rockway or Mill Cotton is being thrown out there and manufactured. All I'm saying is when I ask, give me a comprehensive answer on both of those, staff cannot do that. 
course they can't do it. Thank you. All right, so a recorded vote has been called. No problem. Yep, okay. Yep, okay, thank you. All in favor? All opposed? And that carries. And that concludes our Community Infrastructure Services Committee. <laughs> and so next, uh, so we will move into special counsel. Thank you very much. I'll call the special counsel meeting uh, to order. We have uh, three items before us. The first one is the appointment of tribunal members. I'll move it. Moved by Councillor Fernandez, seconder. Councillor Singh, any discussion? All those in favor, opposed, that's carried. Authorization to execute an uh, amendment to an agreement. Moved by Councillor galloway Sealock, second by Councillor Ioannidis. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, that's carried. Three readings. Moved by Councillor Marsh, second by Councillor Schneider. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, that's carried. Motion to adjourn. Councillor Gazzola, Councillor Davey, all those in favor? Opposed, that's carried.